Hello, today we're making a snake elephant tiger rabbit tarantula alligator, so stick around. You know when you have an idea that is stuck on repeat in your head, and you feel like if you don't act on it, it will slowly devour you? No? Maybe? You know what I mean. <clears throat> Lately I've been thinking about what it would be like if an elephant had a snake instead of a trunk. Don't ask me why, cause I don't know. But I did what every normal person with a computer would do. I opened up my legally acquired copy of Photoshop, imported a picture of an elephant and a snake, and voila! Alright, now it's time to sculpt this thing in real life. I decided to start by sculpting the snake first. And since the snake in the picture I photoshopped onto the elephant was a cobra, I thought it would be a good idea to make the snake a cobra. And when the snake's floppy side parts, more correctly known as the hood, was attached, then I poked some lines on the underside to create the scales on the belly, which I later refined with a more flexible sculpting tool to separate them from each other a bit more. I made a rhombus pattern all across the back of the cobra, as well as on the inside of its hood. And finally I poked two nose holes and two eye holes. And then the snake part was done and it was time to make the elephant head. I bulked up the head with some clay and shaped it to look reasonably elephantish before texturizing the entire thing with a crumpled up piece of aluminum foil. And when the elephant skin was looking rough enough, then it was time to add some eyes. I came to the conclusion that perhaps googly eyes isn't the way to go this time, but who knows, maybe I'll use them in the future. And if you don't want to miss that, then perhaps consider subscribe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I rolled out a small ball of clay, because I thought it would be easier to sell the idea that I'm actually making an elephant if it would have some really nice looking fangs. So I made two fangs, and not two tusks, and when the fangs had been attached to the head, then the snake elephant part of our build was done, and it was time to bake the head in the oven for 30 minutes. Alright, perhaps I have some more explaining to do, so let's get back to Photoshop. As you might have guessed, I wasn't done by just making a head. Oh, of course, our snake elephant needs a body. So I imported a picture of a tiger, a rabbit, a tarantula and an alligator. And then fused them together into... this thing. I know my selection of animals might seem a bit random, but hear me out. Snake elephant, tiger, rabbit, tarantula, alligator. So as you can see, the last letter of the previous animal is the first of the subsequent animal's name and so on and so forth. Okay, let's get back to building, I guess. I proceeded by covering the entire body in a flat piece of clay that I smoothed out before I made what would become the lower jaw. And in this particular case, it would be the lower jaw of a tiger. And when the jaw had been attached underneath the snake elephant head, then I added a couple of teeth in the mouth. I sculpted a tiger's poofy side beard to tie the head together a bit better before adding some more elephant texture on the back as well as using my homemade texture roller that would give the alligator part on the back of the body some really nice bumpy texture. Then I took my flattest tool and poked some uneven squares on the underside of the alligator to make its protective belly scales. Always protect your tummy. Some additional fur was sculpted on the underside that would tie the tiger jaw together with the body a bit better. You know, building this thing got me thinking a bit more logistical than I usually do. Not to go super biblical or anything, perhaps, perhaps maybe. But an animal like this would surely have saved a lot of place in Noah's Ark. You know, just saying. Yeah, and then the body was looking pretty good, and it was time to bake it in the oven before continuing with the rest of it. Since we have six animals in the equation, I thought it would be fun to randomize how many legs it would get. Right, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, four legs. So I drilled four holes in the body of our freshly baked grey clay snake elephant tiger alligator before bending some armature wires to a slightly angled leg shape. I then attached them with a little dribble of super glue, as well as adding some extra aluminum foil that would become the big bubbly spider butt. The front legs of our creature would be a part of the tiger, and since the tiger is stronger than both you and me together, I made him looking really muscular. But then again, I have no idea how strong you are. Maybe you look like this. The back legs would be part of the alligator, so I gave it the same bumpy texture as the rest of the body. Some claws were added to the alligator feet, and when those were attached, then it was time to make the butt of our tarantula. Tarantulas have these strange looking butt antennas, I have no idea what they're for, but they're nonetheless an important part of the creepy tarantula experience. Alright, let's see here now. Snake, elephant, tiger, rabbit, tira- Almost forgot the rabbit ears. We need the rabbit ears. 
so I squished together some pieces of flat clay before making the ends a bit more attachable. And when the ears were in place, then our snake elephant tiger rabbit tarantula alligator was done and it was time for it to head into the oven for one last final bake. Alright, time to make a base. I kind of like the look of the ground that the elephant in the original picture I photoshopped was standing on. And since I pretty much had tapped all my imagination building the snake elephant tiger rabbit tarantula alligator, I thought I would just copy the look of that for the base. I made some small piles of clay poo poo of camera that I attached to the base because, uh, well, um. Okay, anyways, then it was. And speaking of paint, when I had painted, I painted the base with a really nice brown color, which I covered the entire thing with. And when that layer had dried, then I added some tufts that kind of looked like dry grass that I placed in groups of three to make them look a bit bigger. Some PVA glue was added onto the base before I sprinkled on some yellowy green flock onto the entire base. I realized it was looking a bit too uniform, so I knew I had to paint some color variation to it later on. But before that I added some clumps of a greener thick flock that kind of would look a bit like bushes or something like that. And after the base had been dabbed with a bunch of drab, beige and light brown colors, then it was done and it was time to paint this snake elephant tiger rabbit tarantula alligator. Alright, show of hands, do we happen to have anyone watching this video that plays Dungeons and Dragons? Or perhaps more correctly is the dungeon master in Dungeons and Dragons? Mm, Alright. Yep. Well, since this is a fantastically fantastical creature that you'll never get to experience in real life, I thought I'd give it some stats so any dungeon master out there who wish to ruin game night can easily throw this animal onto any unsuspecting group of players. So I'm just gonna leave this right there. If you wanna pause the video... Take it... Yep. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah. <clears throat> After the tiger had been painted white, then I wet blended some light browns and orange onto the legs to give some color variation to the fur before I added some additional highlights. Then the tiger's distinct black lines were painted on the underside as well as a thin line of grey highlight in the middle of them. The rabbit ears were painted brown with a lighter inside and I also added some blood veins showing here and there. Since we have a spider in the equation, I painted the fangs black just like a tarantula have. And speaking of tarantulas, the butt got painted with a dark brown before adding some highlights to the antenna things. Then I wet blended together some dark blue and black on the back of the alligator. And as that layer was drying, then I painted the underside with a light green before stippling on highlights to get an uneven texture. And finally I dry brushed the back of the alligator to make the textures pop out a bit more. Well of course I managed to break off a claw off the alligator foot, but uh, you know... See, I, but I found it. It's right, let's see, right there. There it is. And when the claw had been attached with some super glue, then the painting was done. But I've never seen a tarantula with such a clean shaved butt, so of course we have to fix that. The brush that I'd used for painting the base had seen better days, so I decided to cut off all the bristles in one fell swoop, then separating them from each other before gluing them on to the behind. All right, one hair down. Couple more to go. Well, let's just say this took me a while, but I'd never seen a tarantula with a shaved butt, and this is not gonna be the first one, so I did what I had to do. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Here are the final results and also a stupid song that I wrote about this thing. Alright, Maestro, take it away! And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three! Snake elephant, tiger, rabbit, tarantula, I find it quite hard not to make stupid things sometimes I can't help myself, it just comes naturally out of me But I'm pretty damn psyched that you should stick around to the end of the video It means more than you'll ever know Right, you know the lyrics. Here we go. Snake elephant, tiger rabbit, tarantula, alligator. Snake elephant, tiger rabbit.